ಬರಿ ಕನಸು ಕಾಣೋದ್ರಲ್ಲಿಂತ ಯಾರು ದೊಡ್ಡವ್ರು ಆಗೋದಿಲ್ಲ ಅನ್ನೋದಕ್ಕ ಇವರ ಸಾಕ್ಷಿ ಕನಸು ಕಾಣೋದ್ರಲ್ಲಿಂತ ಅಲ್ಲ ಬರೀ ಕನಸನ್ನ ನನಸ್ ಮಾಡೋದಕ್ಕೋಸ್ಕರ ಯಾರು ಹಗಲು ರಾತ್ರಿ ಪರಿಶ್ರಮ ಪಡ್ತಾರಲ್ಲ ಅವರು ಬೆಳೆದಾರ ಅನ್ನೋದಕ್ಕ ಇವರೇ ಕಾರಣ ಇಂದಿನ ಈ ಕಾರ್ಯಕ್ರಮದ ಮುಖ್ಯ ಘಟ್ಟ ಆಗಿರುವಂತಹ ಈವ್ನಿಂಗ್ ವಿತ್ ಲೆಜೆಂಡ್ಸ್ ಕಾರ್ಯಕ್ರಮವನ್ನು ಶುರು ಮಾಡೋದಕ್ಕೂ ಮುನ್ನ ನಮ್ಮ ದೇಶಪಾಂಡೆ ಫೌಂಡೇಶನಿನ ಸಹ ಸಂಸ್ಥಾಪಕರಾದ ಶ್ರೀ ಗುರುರಾಜ್ ದೇಶ್ ದೇಶಪಾಂಡೆ ಅವರನ್ನ ನಾನು ವೇದಿಕೆ ಮೇಲೆ ಕರಲಿಕ್ಕೆ ಇಷ್ಟಪಡ್ತೇನೆ ಫಾರ್ ದ ನೆಕ್ಸ್ಟ್ ಪಾರ್ಟ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಪ್ರೋಗ್ರಾಮ್ ವಿ ವೆಲ್ಕಮ್ ಆನ್ ದ ಸ್ಟೇಜ್ ದೇಶಪಾಂಡೆ ಫೌಂಡೇಶನ್ ಕೋ ಫೌಂಡರ್ ಗುರುರಾಜ್ ದೇಶ್ ದೇಶಪಾಂಡೆ ವಿ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ವೆಲ್ಕಮ್ ನಾರಾಯಣ್ ಮೂರ್ತಿ ಸರ್ ರಾಧಾ ಬಸು ಮ್ಯಾಮ್ ರೂಪಾ ಮಖಿಜಾ ಪೌಲ್ ಮೆಜರೋಲ್ you know after all that exciting program now you're going to le- listen to some boring panelists <laughs> legends are you going to be exciting come 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 you know to tell you the truth they're really scared <laughs> because they had to come up with something that that's really really interesting right so so let's get uh, started because we just have about 25 30 minutes or so um uh, you know we're very lucky to have paul paul is uh, paul grew up in canada <clears throat> got his doctorate from united states worked in australia for many years in very senior positions and right now he is the president of a university university of new brunswick in canada welcome paul and and we have a special connection because in 1973 i went to university of new brunswick the other connection is we are both extremely happy to be here because we both come from a place where today is the coldest day of the winter and is minus 30 degrees <laughs> and murthy of course you all know murthy uh, he built a you know 1980 brick by brick he built the whole infosys and we all get to enjoy this beautiful environment in the amphitheater because of his efforts and this is probably one of the it's a beautiful campus but it's probably one of the smallest of his tens of campuses that he built throughout india so welcome murthy <laughs> radha radha basu is here first of all because of the courtesy of indigo she was supposed to take the flight at 9:30 but that flight is delayed to 10:20 so uh radha radha you know uh, went to us long many many decades ago and she was the very first woman to break the glass ceiling and become a very senior executive in hewlett packard hp and then she was asked to go and start the indian operation for hp which she did and over the next 10 years she built a billion dollar business but that was just a starter over the last 20 years she has been working on creating opportunities for the people from slums and taluka places and villages and she run, now runs a company called i merit which hires 5000 people including quite a few people who graduate from our campus here so thank you radha <laughs> rupa rupa makija lives in new york uh, she is a fellow board member of akshay patra usa and she is co-founder of a company that hires more than 5 6000 people so welcome rupa <laughs> so maybe i'll ask them one question and then maybe we can take some questions and then maybe we can start with some younger people so if you have any questions why don't you just come up to the front that way it'll be easier so so paul with all the geopolitical things that are going on you travel all over the world what are you seeing that's different about the world now than 20 years ago well that's a, that's a great question dash and again thanks thanks for being thanks for uh having me here on this stage with these esteemed people but uh what do i see in the world today versus 20 years ago that's different i see young people with huge aspiration i see tech- technological differences 
which is making the world a smaller place that's bringing us closer together. And I see that use of technology, which is enabling more innovation and more opportunities to help raise uh, you know, economic advantage, innovation, dealing with health, dis health inequalities, et cetera. So I think the technological innovations are something that's really, really a major advance. Yeah, yeah. You know, I think it's, it's opportunities for people in India, but also the rest of the world needs India just as much or even more. So it's here, a, here, it's here. a really uh, nice synergy between the two places. So, so Murthy, uh, I know you worked pretty hard for 50 years to build things. What, what do you see going another 50 years for all the people here who are just getting started? Well, you know, if I were to look at what India has achieved in the last uh, 40 years, I would say the next 50 years will bring even better prosperity to India, even uh, lesser differences between the urban people and the rural people, thanks to all the wonderful things that are going on in that building out there. I would see that India has become perhaps the most digitalized nation in the world because already India is using digital technology in more ways than most other nations. Uh, then I would say that we would have conquered some of the diseases that we think are uh, unconquerable today, like some of the cancers and, uh, for example, kidney failure, et cetera, et cetera. These are things that are somewhat uh, difficult. They seem somewhat difficult at this stage. And then I think India will join the, the nation, uh, the, the committee of nations where its voice will be heard even with more respect for its, because of its performance. That is what I would be very happy with and that's what I believe is possible. Radha, I know you hire a lot of our young people here. What do, you, what do you want them to do better? First of all, I think that um, the young people of today are absolutely what will carry our spirit and our success and achieve the things that you're talking about for India. Oh my gosh, from the little ones, Ruksha and Advaita, to the entrepreneurs, it's just wonderful. I think what I'd like to have the young people, not so much do better, but realize that the power to learn is within them. And every person, every young person there, and I said this to, a, I was at the All Hands at uh, the I Married Hubli Center, and every person, technology is changing so rapidly, so you don't look to skilling from somebody else. What Deshpande Skilling has taught young people and what we do is to enable them on an everyday basis to learn something new and to be able to go out there and be really tough when things don't look so good and go out there and actually conquer it through their knowledge. That's what I'd like our young people to do. Thank, Thank you. you. So Rupa, this is your first trip to Hubli. What have you seen until so far? What's your reaction? I'm blown away. I mean, it's. I was a little bit nervous when I saw this crowd. And then when I heard the kids, I saw the kids. I saw the confidence that they had. I said, shame on you, Rupa, if you're still scared, honestly. <laughs> Thank you, thank you. Well, can I ask uh, the younger people in the back to maybe ask some questions, come to the front? I know you all have a lot of questions. Anybody? Come. 
Good evening, sir. Okay. Where are you? Okay. I'm Sangeeta from DSF9. You are now already uh, Deshpande skilling. My question is for Narayan Murthy, sir. Sir, when you start that company, that moment, who put their trust, uh, trust for you and they, who uh, invest uh, first rather than you, sir? So, Murthy, when you started, who put the trust in you and invested in you? Rather than you, sir. Well, I think there were several people who put trust in us. First was my wife, who gave who gave 10,000 rupees because some of my colleagues didn't have money at that stage. It was a very small sum, but a couple of my colleagues didn't even have that. So we didn't want a situation where, you know, only a few of us would regist be registered as founders because the registrar of companies insisted that they should actually put the money in. Therefore, a couple of them we chose uh, uh, my, my wife uh, gave money of 10,000 and then we gave loans to them and they did that. Second was our first customer. He, he, was, a, he was running a company called Data Basics Corporation in New York that specialized in, uh, in software for the apparel industry. You know, and then thanks to him, his selling and all of that, we could install our system in Reebok, you know, in, in Jockey, in uh, many other companies. Uh, third was my younger colleagues who had confidence in me and they agreed to join me. Fourth was our government because we got the initial funding, not from any bank, not from any multinational bank, not from any Indian bank, but from Karnataka State Industrial Investment and Development Corporation, case IDC, and KSFC. This is something, therefore, I would always remain very grateful to our government institutions. And finally, I think our society because unless we had the goodwill of our society, I don't think we could have come so far. Let me stop here. Thank you, sir. So the lesson is very simple. If you want to start a company, get married to a spouse who can fund you. <laughs> so, yeah, what's your question? Good evening, everyone. My name is Akshita Naik. I'm from DSF 07 program. My question is to the President and Vice Chancellor of University of New Brunswick, Canada, uh, Mr. Paul, sir. What is the biggest difference you found in Indian education system and Canadian education system? Thank, thank you. Uh, thank you for that question. Uh, th there's actually a lot of similarities. Uh, the similarities are access to wonderful programs, students who are very, very motivated uh, to pursue their passions. Some of the differences might relate to uh, resources and accessibility, but I would say that there's more similarities. So, so in terms of education, you've got wonderful programs here. You've got the skilling, uh, at the Sponde skilling behind us, which is extraordinary. But what I see is just on, on both sides of the world, Great, great programs for students to pursue. So there's a lot more similarities and differences. Thank you for your question. Thank you, sir. So you're going to send some Canadian students here? <laughs> Absolutely. I, but I, I come with them because I love <laughs> India. Hello. Hello, sir and ma'am. I have a question to you all. Anybody okay. want to answer, you can answer. Okay. <laughs> uh, Should they answer only if they know the answer? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Who knows, they will answer. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> in the future, to become a good person, what are the things we have to do? Becoming a good person, what are the things we have to do? 
Wow, Radha, that's a good question. Me... Radha, are you a good person? <laughs> okay, given who is asking the question, I have to answer this very carefully because otherwise she's going to question me even further. So I think being a good question, a person is not just in the future. It's in you now. And it's in what you're doing today. And that goodness is being built on the fact that you have the courage, you have the interest, you have the energy, you have the ability to learn, and you have the desire to be good. And that is the foundation of being good in the future. So, can, uh, yeah. so, can so I, you're already a good person. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Can I tell a thought here? Yeah. If you struggle today, you will enjoy tomorrow. If you enjoy today, you have to struggle tomorrow. Exactly. I agree. And just because you're struggling today, that also develops so much character. Without the struggle today, there is no goodness tomorrow. So remember that. Anytime there is struggle, it is about combating it and moving forward. And it builds character. Yes? And builds goodness. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, Anand. You know, if you struggle today... You will enjoy tomorrow. No, I'll tell you what happens. <laughs> if you struggle today, you'll get to struggle even more tomorrow. <laughs> and struggling itself is a joy. Today is beautiful. Tomorrow is much more beautiful. Exactly. Yeah. But day after tomorrow is... Today is beautiful. Day after tomorrow is much more beautiful. But most people die tomorrow evening. Yeah. So, com com that? confident in yourself. Don't think others, others, other selves are not thinking about you all, guys. You, you know what? Why don't you come and sit on that chair there? <laughs> come, sit there. No, come here. Sit there. Because I have you know. to go catch yeah. an airplane. Come, 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 come here. Come. Come, here. Come. Uh. come on, come on. Okay. <laughs> come on, come over here. You, you have a question? Come in here. Okay. You want to meet a legend? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I'm not getting words to talk in front of you all, guys. So, Radha, are you taking off? So, Radha has to leave to catch her Indigo flight. So, just give them your last word. Yeah. I am so, so sorry to be leaving at this moment. This is such an enjoyable, I was actually going to have some more debates with her, but I just want to say that um, when we, three years ago when we were here and you said start a center in Hooghly, it looked like we would have Deshpande skilled young people and it would be starting one more of our 10 centers and then came COVID. And um, we spent about six months, eight months saying, oh, COVID, COVID. Finally, we said, combat COVID and start the darn center in the middle of the COVID. And I can't tell you how, how deeply and passionately I feel that this was the right thing to do. And everybody here, I think I feel, somebody asked me, how do you feel about visiting Hooghly. I said, I don't feel anymore I'm a visitor here. I feel like we are part of this. So thank you, David. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you Radha. And I really apologize for having to run. Okay. Anybody have questions? Ask me also. My crafty over here. Okay, go ahead. First of all, good evening to all the dignitaries over here. And I'm Kavana GS from Down Gray. I'm from Full Stack Developer Program. Actually, I have prepared a question for our other ma'am. <laughs> it's okay. We, you, you have another ma two ma'ams here. So, yeah. oh. okay. okay, I'll ask the question for our Narayan Murthy, sir. So the question is, what do you anticipate the massive challenges the technology sector would face in the future? And how your company is preparing for that? So, did you hear that? Well, you know, what, what, what is the future of technology? Is that the question? No, no. Her question is, 
what are the technological advances that you see and what challenges would that pose to Infosys? Well, technology is a tool. If it is used by good people, it does a lot of good for the society, for the world. On the other hand, if it is used by bad people, it can destroy the world. I mean, for example, nuclear bomb is a classical example. You can use nuclear energy to produce, you know, carbonless energy, like France is doing today in a big way. On the other hand, if somebody were to drop a nuclear bomb, the whole country will be destroyed. So technology being just a tool has to be used by good people. It should, there should be safeguards in the society so that it does not fall into the hands of people. For example, in, in, in computer uh, area, cyber crime is a big thing, right? So unless we develop tools to make sure that the cyber uh, uh, thieves don't steal uh, the, our secrets, our credit card details, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. It's a problem. So technology has good uses and a few not so good uses. So it all depends upon how we will use. It all depends upon how the society will work. Uh, how the whole world will work together in a very convivial manner to ensure that it does not fall into the hands of the bad people. That's what I would say. Thank you, sir. I'm blessed by your hands, sir. Well, thank you. Thank you very thank much you, for sir. all the questions. I know it's past nine. It's getting late. I do want to leave a little bit of time so that we can get some good food and have a conversation among all of you. So, why don't I ask just for a closing remark from all the four of them and then we'll all head to food. Paul. Thank you, Desh. Look, my closing remark, I just want to start with a thank you to Desh and Jezri. I've, uh, I've been here twice to Hubli. Been here twice to Hubli, and uh, I've been uh, blown away both times. Uh, there's amazing things happening here. Uh, and so we have brought a large delegation from the university. So my closing, uh, my closing statement is, Keep this going. This is extraordinary work, life-changing work you're doing here. We commend it. We celebrate it. We'll keep supporting it. So well done. Thank you for having us, Tish. Thank you. Thank you. Murthy, uh, I think uh, you yeah. can close your remark with an answer to the question. Uh, what does young Bharat has to look forward to? Well, uh, I think in some way, you are seeing two examples, and you're sitting in between the two. One, an institution there, the people of that institution, the founders of that institution, have taught us how to transform the lives of the rural poor. On the other hand, you're also sitting in the Lakeview uh, amphitheater of an institution that is helping the youngsters sitting in Hubli to solve the toughest challenges in software systems of the most developed countries in the world. Therefore, what I would say is simply this, that these are two wonderful examples. It's not just sufficient to be a good software engineer. It is very, very important to ensure that you have a small part of your heart dedicated to making the life of the, uh, those people that did not have the same fortune, the same blessing that you people have had in, in becoming 
you know, uh, strong citizens of this society, you know, based on uh, all the wonderful things that are happening in the country. So always keep a part of your heart for the less fortunate ones and support them because we have a, an extraordinary example out there. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Rupa, what are your closing remarks? I said this before, I see a very, very bright future for India uh, with the youth that I have seen. We don't have the migration that used to happen where for anybody to do well in life, they had to move to a bigger city. They would leave their family behind. They would make sacrifices. There was a lot of, or there continues to be a lot of polarity. There are people who are very, very rich and there are people who don't have much, who live on a dollar a day, maybe less. With the work that the Deshpande Skilling Center is doing, I think there is an opportunity for us to have a more equitable nation. We can lift everybody up. We don't have to have one group of people do well at the expense of somebody else. There are everybody, there are opportunities for each and every person, doesn't matter what background they come from, does not matter what language they speak. What you saw over here, you saw the passion, you saw the enthusiasm, you saw the emotion. I, did not, I do not speak the language. I had tears in my eyes. And I could just contextualize what they were talking about. So it's a very, very bright future. Thank you. Does this mean you're going to open an office here? <laughs> It is definitely a possibility to consider, and also the people that we are looking to hire. Okay. Uh, I have seen how Radha has grown her team, <laughs> the number of people she hires. So from the small beginnings that we have, uh, there is a huge opportunity for us to work much more closely together. Thank you. Thank you. So in SIV, have they taught you what is a closing remark? In SIV, have they taught you what is a closing remark? You will tell me closing remark. What is your closing remark? Actually, uh, how much I know, I will tell that. Okay. No. <laughs> closing remark. Conclusion. Hello, ma'am. Oh, oh, oh. I'm, I'm not getting words to tell here because as a I, I'm sitting here. Be, be, behind of these guys, okay? I'm not getting the words because... Hello, ma'am. Because, ma because of what? Good evening, ma'am. Huh? <laughs> okay, no, no, you, you can go ahead and finish. Okay. <clears throat> I'm not getting words because I'm also studying now 8th standard. These people are already graduated and already higher places these people are. But still, I'm from village and I'm studying 8th standard. But I'm sitting beside of them, them, these all people. So I'm not getting word. Actually, I was very happy to tell you that. Thanks for giving me this, such a great opportunity. Well, congratulations. Thank you, great. sir. Well, thank you. Thank you, everybody. Um, it's, it's been an amazing two days. I know it's been pretty taxing for all of you. All of you have been up early morning, field trips, going to sleep late, getting up early. So I hope you'll all enjoy the dinner tonight and, uh, and, and leave Hubli with fond memories. And we look forward to working with all of you. Thank you. Hello, ma'am. Good evening, everyone. I am Srishti Hiremat from CSI College. I have a question for Radha ma'am. Rupa ma'am, Rupa Gandhi. Uh, hello ma'am, good evening. Uh, I want to ask you about uh, uh, your small story, your life story, how you overcame in hardship and uh, uh, motivational to women nowadays about struggling all. Thank you. I can say failure is the best motivation. Uh, for me to start GEP, uh, it came on the foundation of failure. I was fired from my prior job. I didn't have anything <laughs> to do but to prove myself that I was worth it. 
and realizing that I didn't fit in a corporate environment and if I wanted to build something, I would have to do it by myself. Uh, so that's how I got started with a phenomenal group of partners, uh, co-founders uh, that we started. So next year is gonna be year 25 since GEP was founded and we are still, the founders are still together and we are making a difference in the procurement and supply chain. Thank you. Thanks Thank so you. Much. Thank you, Rupa. Thank you, guests and they sir, for an interesting conversation. Let us all give them another huge round of applause.